even something small um, will be incredibly huge. Um, uh, and of course, you know, there are a lot of us working at the company to create something huge. Uh, the first drug that we're bringing to market uh, and the first age-related disease that we'll bring it out for is Alzheimer's disease, uh, which is obviously a huge, huge problem uh, for humanity. Mm. So talk to us about the progress that you've made so far and what needs to be done from here. Yeah, so we have uh, so far uh, established that uh, there's a, a signal that this molecule, um, the first one, the first drug we're bringing to, to um, out out into the clinic, works, uh, and that it produces you know the the signs of efficacy um, that that we look for in experimental animals and cells, um, and mm -hmm. um, it shows a remarkable uh, safety, like the um, the property of being non-toxic. So, Sandro, uh, as an investor here uh, leading this uh, investing round, capital raising round as well, why did you decide to back this uh, company? What caught your attention? And you also um, managed to bring in OpenAI CEO Sam Altman in this round as well as an early backer. What was the conversation like? Well, you know, as, as an investor, we look for uh, three main things. And I always felt Joe uh, had them all. So first is uh, the obsession. And uh, if you meet Joe, uh, you will have the first impression on the first meeting. Uh, he had two exits. One was to Google. I think Bill Gates had uh, the smallest uh, PC in the world on stage and said, you know, this is the coolest thing I've seen. Mm -hmm. And then the second was to recruit pharma. So this is his third baby. And we, we met in Switzerland and I just, you know, fell in love with him. I said, no, how can I help you? Second is love and passion. Uh, and the third is frugality. So I think Joe has got those three components as a founder. And, uh, and obviously, you know, we are just so privileged that we can be part of this journey. Um, uh, Sam uh, seeded it uh, four years ago with uh, $180 million, uh, but it's really incredible team, uh, many PhDs in Redwood in California. Um, and, and yeah, and so there is, uh, uh, as an investor, I think it's uh, one of those very, very unique businesses you see really one in a billion. Mm. I mean, you're raising $1 billion in Series A. Uh, it's a big number for Series A to begin with. And, of course, when we're talking about this AI-enhanced startup, especially when it comes to biotech, I have to ask you a valuation question, Sandro. Are you comfortable with the valuation that you're going in for? And what kind of valuation trajectory are you hoping for down the road? Uh, yes, we are very comfortable. You know, those days, uh, uh, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, the biotech, uh, I guess the Zenit was uh, probably February 2021. So there was you know, lots of COVID uh, liquidity. There was vaccine euphoria, you know, some record, record IPOs and SPACs. Um, and then you had, you know, the crash in 2022, 2023. So you had uh, rates rising sharply. The IPO window uh, slammed shut. And, and valuation collapsed. Uh, so I think we had kind of a rebuilding process phase uh, in 2022, 2023, where all those big pharma, now they are cash rich, uh, you know, after the pandemic uh, windfall, and you have uh, AI plus biology convergence. So th th those companies are attracting, are attracting capital. There is, uh, you know, a more disciplined approach, uh, I think, from the venture capital world. Um, and and I, I believe that uh, we might view, uh, we might see the 2025, 2026 as a, the next sustained up cycle. Uh, you know, we see only in the public mm. markets, for example, if you look at the XBI, which is the biotech uh, ETF, I think in February 21, it was roughly $174. Those days is around $110. Uh, is, is up 50% from 2022 uh, lows, but still far from the 2021 peak. Um, and on the private markets, I think we see solid momentum in uh, AI-driven uh, discovery, uh, in cell engine therapy. 
uh, near the generation longevity, of course, uh, and obesity, uh, metabolic uh, space. So we, we really th uh, see the on the fundraising side, the more structured rounds, you know, uh, more strategic investors. And uh, uh, and by that I mean, you know, really the smart money are joining. Uh, so it's large family offices, but really institutional capital. So the sovereign wealth funds, mm -hmm. uh, you know, pension, universities, uh, endowments, and VCs.